नमस्कार वेलकम टू यूनिट एट पार्ट टू जर्नी थ्रू अ म्यूजियम आर्किटेक्चरल म्यूजियम चंडीगढ़ लेट्स बिगिन विद द इंट्रोडक्शन चंडीगढ़ द सिटी ब्यूटिफुल द फर्स्ट प्लान सिटी आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ इंडिया इज आर फर्स्ट डेस्टिनेशन टू बी बोर्ड ऑन a brick by brick made modern city of india with such a historic past makes chandigarh a matchless destination to explore it's better to see this city as a passion it's a passion of pandit jawaharlal nehru to conceive this city it's the passion of le corbusier to design this city is the passion of pure genre to live in this city and the passion of nek chand to create the magical art of the city and the passion of the people who makes this city vibrant and vivant from prehistoric to historic to modern city chandigarh has lots to explore i often call the city the city of passion passion of pandit late jawaharlal nehru to create a modern city passion of kabuzier passion of nek chand passion of genre and passion of people Let's explore the city and know more about the Architecture Museum in Chandigarh. The Chandigarh Architecture Museum is one of the three buildings that lie within the Sector 10 Museum complex. The Architecture Museum, also known as the City Museum, has always been a fascinating point in Chandigarh. The building that houses the Architecture Museum was designed by architect S D Sharma. who trained directly under kabuzier and genre the basic design of the building is based on a building created by kabuzier as an exhibition pavilion on zurich switzerland after kabuzier's death sharma was entrusted with the task of designing the building for the city museum and overseeing its creation the architecture museum building had to be conceptualized and designed in a way that was congruous with the adjacent art museum the building is a fabulous example of modernism done the right way the museum displays original letters and correspondence between administrators and the architects who created chandigarh's blueprint the original drawings and plans for the city are displayed along the photographs of the developing city in various stages this video will take you to the historical era of partition and make you feel enthralled here are the details of the chandigarh architecture museum location it is situated at sector 10 in the museum and art gallery complex the timings it's open from 10 am to 5 in the evening The price of the entry ticket is 10. It's closed on every Monday. The phone numbers are given and the photography and videography are allowed. Let's begin the line wise. The first one is in the front of the building. Welcome to the Chandigarh Architecture Museum which was set up in 1997 to document, preserve and showcase rare documents, drawings, sketches and archives etc. pertaining to the making of chandigarh this sculptural building in front of you designed by architect s d sharma was adopted from the structure designed by le corbusier as an exhibition pavilion at zurich in 1965 the city museum building has been built in concrete conceptually corbusier desired that architecture and work of art should be shown in a modest and nomadic setting of a dwelling where dimensions conform to the human scale and the feeling of arbitrariness commonly found in rooms designed for exhibition purposes is avoided the main cuboid block of the museum is simple yet elegant structure in concrete derived from two square placed at an offset in plan the striking double roof over the terrace of the main structure is in the form of two pyramids one upright and the other inverted over each square second at the entrance as we enter the city museum through this small tube like stairway at the basement level 
the display unfolds the trauma of partition of the country and the necessity to build the new capital city of Chandigarh. The various panels tells the story of selection of the site and accompanying controversy through rare documents, maps and drawings. The silent feature of the site finally chosen as its topography, existing features of villages, vegetation and archaeological history provide a fascinating picture of the land with a panoramic view of the Shivalik hills to be transformed into the new city. A note by A. L. Fletcher describes in detail what it would mean to make a garden city on this site. The next is the American planners and architects, although most people associate the planning of Chandigarh with the world-renowned French architect Le Corbusier, much of the pioneering spade work for the project was done by two American architects, Albert Mayer and Matthew Nevesky. The master plan of Chandigarh was de developed by Albert Mayer, assumed a fan-shaped outline spreading gently to fill the site between two seasonal riverbeds. It is based on a module of a neighborhood unit called Superblock, placed along curvilinear road to avoid sterility and boredom. The exhibits in this section focus on the selection of Mayer and Nuveski and the blueprints of the plans for Chandigarh which are usually referred to as the Mayer's plans. These exhaustive drawings cover drainage, water supply, circulation and plantation of the city in detail. An interesting display focuses on the board similarities between the city's first master plan prepared by Albert Mayer and the final one modified by Le Corbusier and comparison between the neighborhood unit with the present day sector. Fourth, the Mayer Nuveski proposal. The Mayer Nuveski proposal evacuative original sketches, studies, and drawings prepared by the American team demonstrate the enormous amount of pioneering work they did in evolving the first master plan and a schematic architectural idiom for the new capital city. The freehand sketches made by Matthew Nuveski for developing an architectural style suited to an Indian context through his exquisite sketches visualizing housing schemes shopping areas and other components of a neighborhood unit incorporating traditional Indian elements are of special interest. All these rare sketches, studies and documents are on display in original for the first time and highlight the Heathrow lesser known great contribution made by the American team in the building of the Chandigarh. When you enter this level, you will also got to see a letter written by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru describing the Chandigarh. The next level is Kabuzier and his team. On this level displayed material pertaining to the arrival of Kabuzier and his team comprising of Pure Genre, Jane Drew and Maxwell Fry. Kabuzier, who had already established himself as a great urban theorist and had a definite idea of his own regarding the master plan of Chandigarh set forth a clear-cut agenda of concepts. Kabuzias based the city's mayor plan on four primary functions living, working, circulation and care of body, spirit. The detailed philosophy and contents of each component is explained through studies, sketches and drawings prepared by Kabuzier personally as well as by his team of foreign and Indian architects. This section also houses the various projects done by Maxwell Fry, Jane B. Drew and Pierre Genre. Also seen here are pieces of furniture designed by Pierre Genre who created a totally new vocabulary using the materials, methods and workmanship available in Chandigarh. His furniture is now world famous for its aesthetics, 
cost effectiveness and climatic comfort derived from using humble materials to create functional and comfortable pieces. The next part of it is the master plan of Chandigarh. The Lokobuzir's conception of the city is already clear in his first sketches of the master plan and its component. He liked to compare the city he planned to a biological entity. The head was the capital, the city center was the heart and the work area of the institutional area and the university were limbs. The large model of the city of Chandigarh shows the city is in the fact made up of self-sufficient units called as sector which are divided by the circulating V4 roads around them that intense intersect to create roundabouts at each of the four corners to create a grid iron plan. Each sector is 800 meters by 1200 meters enclosed by roads allocated to fast mechanized transport and sealed to direct access from the houses. Each sector caters to the daily needs of its inhabitants and has a green stripe oriented longitudinally stretching centrally along the sector in the direction of the mountains. The modular gives two series of harmonious dimensions based on the human body. The dimensions are arrived at via the classical golden ratio of 1 is to 1.618. The blue and the red series are at the range of dimensions of two different heights of a human. From these two basic dimensions we get all over. Dimensions of different postures of modular man are shown in this. This was the basis of modular diagram which was used extensively by Kabuzier from the site layout to the detailed furniture. The Edict of Chandigarh The Chandigarh is a must read as its purpose is to enlighten the present and future citizens of Chandigarh about the basic concepts of planning of the city so that they become its guardians and save it from the whims of individuals. This edict sets out the basic ideas underlying the planning of the city. Another lesser known aspect of Chandigarh's planning is that besides architectural and other components, it is one of the few cities of the world with planned landscaping. Various conceptual sketches showing the landscaping of the city based on careful observation of the vegetations of India plantation schemes for various roads and orientation show the painstaking attention to this aspect. The next is the work of Kabuzier, the capital. The capital is Le Kabuzier's through de France. He began to sketch the designs for the capital buildings during his first visit itself in early 1951. These geometrical concrete buildings are intended to embody the essential spirit of new city. The size and solidity of the structure denote the power of the people in the democratic state. Various models, photographs and drawings give details of the monumental buildings designed by Kabuzier personally for the city, such as the capital complex, the museum complex and the colleges of art and architecture. The master plan of the capital area indicate the location of the secretariat, the assembly, the high court, the governor's palace yet unbuilt and the various monuments in the piazzos. The first conspicuous building to come into view is the secretariat. The largest of all from the building in the complex measuring 254 meters by 42 meters. It is designed as a vast linear slab like structure and presently a workplace of around 6000 people. The sketches of Kabuzier show an endless rhythm of balconies and louvers on its linear facades punctuated in a subtle way by a deliberately asymmetrical composition of brisses sole, a sun shading device. 
its facade besides the rhythmic brise sole is also sculpturally punctuated by the protruding masses of angled ramps and stairways the root line has a playful composition of a restaurant block a ramp and a terraced garden to break the endless linearity in front of the secretariat is located the most sculptural and eye catching of all the geometrical forms of the capitol the assembly characterizing the roof line of the assembly is a great hyperbolic drum whose model is displayed here which forms the hall of the punjab assembly the entrance from the piazzo level of the ceremonial occasions is through a massive entrance 7.60 meters high and 7.60 meters broad whose enamel door a gift to punjab from france translate a cubist mural painted by le cubusier himself the high court is a linear block with the main facade towards the piazza it has a rhythmic arcade created by a parasol like roof which shades the entire building keeping in the view the special dignity of the entrance for them through a high portico resting on three giant pylons painted in bright colors very much in the tradition of bulan darwaza of fatehpur sikri this grand entrance with its awesome scale is intended to manifest the majesty of law to all who enter the symbolism of providing an umbrella of shelter of law to the ordinary citizen is most vividly manifested here in the court rooms colorful tapestry one to each court room cover the entire rear wall in the main and smaller court rooms many symbols that encapsulated le cabuzier's view of men earth nature the emblems of india and the scales of justice were depicted in abs tract and the geometric patterns in the high court of chandigarh designed by le cabuzier the next are the monuments the open hand the tower of shadow the geometric hill and the matris memorial with water bodies and landscape features tied together the wide open spaces of the capitol area the open hand is the most thoroughly developed of the chandigarh monuments as well as the most important as a compositional element in the capitol also very interesting correspondence between kabuzier and nehru often expressing the frequent controversies which kabuzier faced is displayed the hand raises 85 feet from an excavated plaza termed at fase de la consideration the pit of contemplation which is provided for debate on public affairs the giant hand is designed to turn on ball bearings to indicate symbolically the direction of the wind that is the state of affairs the tower of shadows out of the monuments in the capital area the tower of shadow is a strong expression of le cabuzier's desire to understand the relationship between the movement of the sun and the men's well-being the martyrs memorial the martyrs memorial the martyrs memorial which is devoted to the martyrs of india is an elongated ramp that gives a different vista of complex at very turn the symbols of the swastika and the ashok chakra embossed on the surface symbolizes the indian civilization all this you can see at the second level of the museum in detail now we will go to the third level of the museum the monuments this floor houses the theme of chandigarh today and tomorrow this section broadly displays the city's growth after the first phase and the departure of kabuzier and his foreign associates the panels in this section show drawings and the models of the unbuilt fourth structure of the capital complex the governor's palace was the most sculptural building designed by kabuzier against the backdrop of shivaliks 
It was however rejected by Pandit Nehru as undemocratic considering that the times of palaces for governors were now over. The Museum of Knowledge was designed as an alternative to the governor's palace and was to serve a dual function as a place for the state reception as well as a research and data center using then futuristic electronic devices. This too was never made. Chandigarh then and now. The city's evolution through its second phase and the beginning of the third phase are highlighted. On special interests are the various housing schemes done by Chandigarh Housing Board signifying a major change in the city's skyline from bungalow type houses to clusters of multi-storey apartment. Also the commercial centres and major public buildings built later are displayed. The sub-city centre sector 34 has been designed conceptually on the same lines as the city centre that is sector 17 with certain modification necessitated by changing the needs of the city now. A study of the layout plan of the city centre sector 17 by Le Corbusier which was planned around the four pedestrian concourses meeting at a central chalk. It is a pedestrian paradise dotted with fountains, sculptures and grooves of trees. The mushrooming growth of slums, informal sector, gross violation of Periphery Control Act of 1952 and a manifold increase in vehicular traffic pose serious challenges for the future well-being of Chandigarh. This section attempts to highlight all these problems through the display items. The next items on the display is the lake and the rock garden. The Sukhna Lake was constructed across the Sukhna Cho in 1950 with an earthen dam about 3 kilometers long and 14 meters high. It is fed by two hilly chows. The total catchment area of the lake is 4,207 hectares. The drawings and the models show the profile of the lake with the section of the retaining wall. Jeanneret designed the first paddle boats for the lake and as per his will, his ashes were immersed in the lake. He is still very much a part of Chandigarh even today. Nekchan's famous rock garden makes a special appearance in the museum as a counterpart to the strict geometry of the city. His figurines made out of waste materials like broken tiles and mangles have become synonymous with Chandigarh now. The last display shows the growth of Chandigarh urban complex today and tomorrow. After going through this level, you can either go up the ramp to the terrace for a panoramic view of the museum complex or exit through the ramp or you can go back by the staircase. We hope that the visit has been enlightening and informative and look forward to your next visit with your family and friends. Here is given a simple itinerary to plan your visit in the Chandigarh. Arrive on Chandigarh on Saturday, 9.15 meet and greet at Chandigarh Architecture Museum which would be your st uh, stop one situated at Government Museum and Art and Natural section, sector 10. The museum explains all about Chandigarh and its beginning. The stop 2 is visit Arts College at sector 10. It's in complex area only. It's designed by Le Corbusier. You can also visit Natural History Museum here. Stop 3 is Pure Genre Museum. Devo devote some time here in understanding the philosophy of Pure Genre at his home converted into a museum in sector 5. Stop 4 is Capitol Complex. In a 2.5 hours walk, you will be able to see Capitol Complex and its various monuments designed by Le Corbusier, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You will see Open Hand, High Court, Secretariat, Marty's Memorial, Tower of Shadow and Assembly. Next stop is Gandhi Bhavan in Punjab University and the other places designed by Pure Genre. 
visit Punjab University, its hostel, administrative building, library and other masterpieces designed by Jean Ray. In the evening, visit the Sukhna Lake or Rock Garden and rest of the day you can roam around and see the other masterpieces designed by the great architects of this country. Thank you for watching.